All right. So J1 theta 1 double dot. K T1, K T2, theta 1. Damping element uh, comes typically first in the order of things. So let me write that out first. So C T theta 1 dot. Theta 1, Kt1 times uh, Kt2 times Theta 2 is T1 0. Okay. Please note in mind the correction that I made. I forgot to put the torque T2. Okay. So that was sneaky uh, somewhere sitting down there. So I have to put it on the equal and opposite side. One thing I want to mention, hang on, I'll complete this problem and take questions. One thing I want to mention, you see this situation here, KT1 plus KT2. It acts as if those two springs are in series. Because at the point of connection, those two springs are subjected to the same angular displacement, which is theta 1. Okay? So if you can think of it, you can think of it as springs in series, but also beware there is a contribution from the rotation of theta 2. Same story for uh, the second one. Let's draw the uh, free body kinetic diagrams. All right, so here one has to be careful. So there is first of all Fs1. plus F static 1, then I'm going to have T2, T static 2, I'm going to have TD which is equal and opposite to what we had drawn on that end there, okay. So that's likewise this way equal and opposite, back on this mass, torque T O 2, this is the applied torque, and uh, that's about it, and right here. J2 theta 2 double. Free body diagram, kinetic diagram. The hope is the contribution of this Fs, uh, F static uh, 1 will cancel off with the static torque from the torsional spring, okay, which is what we had derived at the beginning okay, for ACP. See, if I write out the equations, bear with me while I complete this problem. Okay, hang on. Uh, you have a question? Or? Yeah. Is T1 supposed to be on there? T1? Yeah. TS1 is not supposed to be on there, right? It's only the first one that we have. See, the first spring is connected only to the first disk. The second spring connects the first and the second disks. So the effect of the first spring is felt only on the first disk, not on the second disk directly. What about the applied torque on the first disk? That's here. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, some of moments. About O2. Start brackets. Assume some sense for positive. All right. So I'm going to have T O2. And then I'm going to have all the rest of them, okay, minus T2, T static 2, and I'm going to have plus um, the effect of that is plus Fs1, F static 1 times R, and then I'm going to have Td as well, minus Td is equal to 
2 theta to w. I want to make sure my directions chosen are right. So if you look at uh, T2, T2 is going to come on and combine with J2 theta to double dot. And I have a sense that this direction is not correct. Okay, it has to be drawn the other way. This is going to be equal and opposite to what you have on the point O2. Okay, so that is not the case here. So please make that change. And this was the discussion that we had at the beginning. So that's not the direction. This is the direction for it. Okay, likewise, TD is going to be drawn this way. Okay, so that they're actually positive quantities. They will cancel off. The static terms will cancel off. This will cancel off. But if I break them all onto the other side, they become negative quantities. I'll write it out here. Very last minute. Please be careful with these directions. I just figured it out because I found out that you'll be getting a negative component of the rotations from the springs in the dampers. So just be careful when you're looking at the figures. Okay. If I read the rest of it. J2, T2 double dot. How I figured out that I was not right is because if I bring T2 and if I bring TD onto the other side, they become the following. The way I have written them now. Okay, and uh, I'm also going to have minus FS1 times R is that guy, T02 is what I called it to be, T20 or O2. TD is the following, J2, theta 2 double dot, CT, you see, how I figured out I was wrong is because this negative sign combined with that negative sign makes it a positive sign. And if you have a stable system, your equation of motion would always be of the following form, where the coefficients accompanying the independent dependent variable will always be positive. OK, those will be positive. You don't need to worry about this guy. That can be anything it wants to be. But the other coefficients have to be positive. That's typical for a stable system. And typically, we always deal with stable systems in 30 to 60, unless otherwise mentioned. So if this is the case, last one, KP2, theta 2, and then I have R times K2, or K1, this is equal to theta 2, and very last one. Equation of motion. A two theta two double dot. C T theta two dot. K T two theta two plus K one R square theta two minus C T theta one dot. K two two theta one minus K one R y1 all of this in closure i have solved the exact same problem thank you for bearing with me for a couple of extra minutes i solved the same problem but using a pendulum and i'm going to post it in my lecture okay thank you if you have questions i'm happy to take them here